this age-old camera power problem shouldn't have been solved by buying 9 replacement batteries. USB ports now have enough power to supply to your camera so it can record and work indefinitely without you having to worry about changing batteries every now and then. This episode is especially useful for live streamers who want to use their DSLRs to upgrade the quality of their videos. If you haven't watched the episode about the Canon EOS webcam utility which you can use to connect your Canon camera to your computer and do live streaming with it, please watch it over here if you need it. To continue, we're going to witness the unboxing. It didn't actually come in a box. It came in a bubble wrap, as you can see. I opened it the wrong way, don't do this. I almost cut the wires, but luckily I just cut the internal packaging. That's all there is in the package. A dummy battery and a USB cable. I'll show you some essential tests to demonstrate how flexible and how versatile this Android dummy battery pack can be. By the way, it's really cheap. I got it for only 365 pesos, 66 cents, and it's not free shipping. Paid almost 400 pesos, but still, it's well under $10. It's really easy to look for. Just look for the Andor ACK E10 5 volts USB dummy battery. Uh, it's a mouthful, but <laughs> uh, okay. Just look for a dummy battery that replaces the LP E10, which you can use for your Rebel camera if you have one, or any camera that uses the LP E10. Now, if you happen to have another type of battery, of course, search for the model of your battery and look for a dummy battery for that. For example, this one's also available, the Andover ACK E6 AC power supply. This is a bigger battery, has a higher power requirement. You have to plug it straight to the wall. Going back to the ACK E10 power supply, let's have a look at its features. The ACK E10 dummy battery coupler, a practical power supply adapter for replacement of LP E10 battery, is compatible with Canon EOS Rebel T3, T5, T6, T7, T100, KISS X50, KISS X70, 1100D, 1200D, 1300D which I have, 2000D, and the newer 4000D. It's not suitable for EOS Rebel T3i, T5i, T6i, or M series. USB plug is designed with voltage conversion circuit and works with DC 5 volts 2 amperes to 4 ampere power source. Connect the USB plug to power source and put the coupler into the camera battery compartment to provide stable and continuous power supply for your camera. It enables you to use external power source with your camera to achieve long time shooting. No need to replace the camera battery again and again. I actually measured the voltage using a multi-tester, I'm going to show you. It registers at exactly 8 volts. The output shouldn't exceed 8.6 because the battery actually disconnects at that point. Try charging one of these manually and check the voltage, you know. So 8 volts is uh, actually going to register full battery all the time. You can plug it to any USB port provided the USB port can supply at least 2 amperes of power. Just like this Romos power bank, one of the ports have a 2 ampere power supply. So just plug it into this one instead of the 1 ampere to make sure it won't create any trouble. Make sure you plug it into the 2 ampere power port. I also tested it with a cell phone charger. It worked, of course, use the 2 ampere one. Let me show you. This one is for charging a tablet. It's 1.5 ampere, so this is not ideal, although it worked. Uh, this one is specified at 2 amperes for my phone. So I'd recommend using something like this if you prefer to plug it straight to the wall. This USB cord is a little bit bigger than other plugs because the electronics seems to be here. There has to be some internal components that increase the voltage from 5 volts to 8 volts. So it gets 5 volts here, steps up the voltage to 8 volts, and it goes to the battery eventually. There's a plug here that you can detach so you can move around. You can also use another power supply for this. If you happen to have an 8 volt AC adapter, it's really important to use an IC regulated power supply so you won't exceed 8 volts and damage your camera. So it goes here, this one, the battery goes into the camera source. Okay, I'll show you that as well, doing that again. So just make sure that the power cord goes 
here to the side where there's a rubber. There's a slot there where the wire goes out. Now once you plug it into the wall or to your power bank, you can power up your camera. So it's really easy to understand, easy to use. And yeah, if you've been planning to improvise something like this, I would say it's not worth it. Just, just buy one like this. It looks very robust. You know, the wire isn't thin, not at all. It looks durable. It looks durable at least. I just got it only a couple of days ago. So I'm going to update you guys if ever I encounter any problems with this. This is just an unboxing and for me an actual review can be done after using the product for at least a month or so. So you're gonna have an idea how durable it is and if ever it's gonna fail. If it's gonna give me any problems, I'm gonna let you know guys. So as far as I'm concerned, it works. When you turn the camera on, it registers full battery, okay, which it should actually do. And I tried recording 10 minutes of footage with it. Okay, didn't stop recording, didn't uh, register low battery. It stayed on full. And I used it for live streaming for maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, it's, it's just plugged in straight to the PC USB port. I plugged it into a USB 3.0 port and uh, kept the camera on for about one and a half hours while in a Zoom meeting. It worked and I never had to worry about draining the battery and replacing it. You know, it, it can save you lots of money, not only because you're not gonna have to buy lots of these, but also you're not gonna keep draining and recharging your batteries and you can extend their lifespan. So it's really ideal for those who shoot a lot at home, in studios, okay, for live streamers, as I said. And as far as I'm concerned, it's really cost effective. If ever you happen to have any experience with these dummy batteries, please share your experiences in the comments below. Now, if you have a bigger camera that uses a bigger battery, of course, you can look for other models. Okay, what I'm sure of is the ACKE6 ACA power supply. It's a popular battery for many different models like the 60D, 6D, 70D, uh, 70D, 7D Mark II, 80D. Yeah, it goes straight to the wall with this adapter. If you're gonna buy lots of replacement batteries, original ones cost 2,498 at Henry's cameras. Yeah, this battery, the LPE10 costs 2,498. Really expensive. LPE6 battery pack costs 4,798. So if you're just gonna use the camera at home, better use an indoor power supply like what I've shown you. The only catch is that it's a third-party accessory. And uh, when it comes to warranty terms, something goes wrong with the camera and it's determined to have been caused by a third-party accessory, you know, Canon may not fix it. If it's worth taking the risk using third-party power supply for your camera, it's up to you, okay? As far as I'm concerned, I'm just using it with my 1300D right now and it works like a charm. So let's say you're shooting an event or you're in an outdoor photo shoot and you just can't plug in the camera. What I would do is connect it to a power bank and pocket the power bank. You can also hang it from your tripod, you know, just manage the wire so it doesn't get tangled anywhere. Yeah, this one doesn't come off easily. So that shouldn't be a problem. As long as everything is uh, fairly tight and attached properly, yeah, no need to worry about running out of battery again. How would you use it? What's your idea, guys? Tell us in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and click the subscribe button if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.